You might be tempted to dismiss this week's ceremony to reconnect inter-Korean roads and railways as a symbolic gesture, or perhaps the bare minimum kind of cooperation that's possible under sanctions. But what if I told you that's far from being the case, and that these transport routes aren't just a symbol, but could literally be the path to strong future ties? I'm Alex Jensen for Korea Now's K News Today. I suppose we had a pretty clear clue as to how contentious this railway issue is when back in August US military officials blocked a related joint study by the two Koreas. Earlier that month, South Korean President Moon Jae-in had called for the establishment of a Northeast Asian railroad community, despite the challenges posed by sanctions, which the US continues to promote particularly strongly. Since August, however, We've seen inter-Korean railway surveys go ahead in the east and west of the peninsula for the first time in over a decade. And we did see North Korea fulfill its promise to host a groundbreaking ceremony before the end of 2018, with around 100 South Korean officials heading north to Panmun Station in the border town of Kaesong for the event this past Wednesday morning. Among them were Transport Minister Kim Hyun-mi, Unification Minister Cho Myung-hyun, and parliamentary leaders. Kim said in a speech that the groundbreaking ceremony is just the beginning of what will be a wide range of cross-border exchanges and cooperation. Today, the railway from Seoul to Kaesong widely opened, she said. We have taken another step forward, opening the door that had been firmly closed for nearly 70 years. Bold words, considering the US needed persuasion just to allow surveys to go ahead, let alone construction. But the North Korean side was even bolder during Wednesday's ceremony. Kim yoon hyuk the North's vice railway minister, called on the two Koreas to go their own way without being swayed by outside influence. It is time to firm up our determination until we can hear the strong sound of a reunification whistle and go forward without vacillation in the face of headwinds. The fact the ceremony went ahead at all has some significance, as it would appear to express at least a little of that determination to hear a reunification whistle. But the ceremony did also need special outside permission. Seoul had to set aside around 700 million won to hold the event. That budget covered the cost of transporting participants to the venue and other event expenses. On Tuesday, it emerged that the United Nations Security Council had granted a sanctions waiver to enable the Koreas to hold the ceremony. In fact, the ceremony itself was not even subject to sanctions on the North. Rather, the waiver was needed for the train taking officials from South Korea to enter the North, along with other materials needed for the event. South Korea only asked for the exemption from the UN after talks with the US in Seoul last week. And a lot more money will be needed if the Koreas ever get to the construction stage. More to the tune of tens of billions of dollars. Potentially the biggest ever case of foreign investment into North Korea. Indeed, this is a project that would involve bringing up to date six rail lines and building a high-speed line. Not a small task given how outdated the North's railways are known to be. The North's railway and road systems are considered to be so decrepit that experts say they'd require major maintenance or even replacement to connect them to those in South Korea. In fact, the country's trains average around 50 kilometers an hour, and you can forget about heavy cargo for now. It's true that China, Russia, and Mongolia all had officials attend Wednesday's ceremony, so there's certainly at least some global support for a network that could see us able to travel from Seoul to Europe by rail, let alone the associated trade benefits. But again, the US will be eyeing any steps from here with suspicion. And much depends on how Washington-Pyongyang dialogue goes from here. Yet if the US is looking for signs of sincerity from the North, it should bear in mind that this formerly reclusive state has opened itself up to South Korean surveyors, who have in theory been able to gather military intelligence all along the way. Remember, these are sensitive border areas. Even Google has had trouble mapping the terrain on the South Korean side. For its part, Seoul is pushing for this process, as it did in the early 2000s, before the so-called Sunshine Policy era saw its sun set. 
There are hopes of meaningful cooperation, but the South Korean government has also conceded that the actual construction will be pursued in line with situations related to the North's denuclearization and global sanctions against North Korea. Yet, as President Moon said earlier this year, even though political unification may be a long way from here, establishing peace between the South and the North and freely visiting each other and forming a joint economic community is true liberation to us.